Hi, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today we're talking about feature engineering, where we're going to take a classification problem and we're going to try to figure out the features that best allow us to complete that classification problem with the highest accuracy. In particular, what we're going to do is we're going to work with a classification problem called uh, part of speech tagging. So take a look at the sentence here. The Fulton Grand Jury said Friday an investigation of Atlanta's recent primary election produced no evidence that any irregularities took place. One of the things that uh, computer scientists and people who work on natural language processing want to do is to help computers understand English sentences like this one. One small step in helping a computer understand this is to figure out what the parts of speech are for each of the words. So you probably remember, perhaps a little bit hazily, what a part of speech is from uh, your elementary school days. What we want to do is we want to say, for example, that the is an article, Fulton is a noun, uh, county also a noun, and grand is an adjective. Uh, jury is a noun, said is a verb, Friday is a noun, and so on. And we want to do that for every word and every sentence in a large collection of documents. Now we have some training data that allows us to build a classifier. Given a word, this is our x, try to produce a part of speech tag y. Okay, so that's the task that we're going to work on. We won't go into the details about where these tags came from or how you get these data. If you want to learn more about that, uh, take natural language processing, um, either taught by me, Martha Palmer, or Jim Martin. Okay, so, but uh, what we're interested in is the task of classification. So how do we map uh, these X's, the words, the context, into these Y's, the part of speech tags? And we're just going to deal with a small subset of the part of speech tags, uh, adjective, noun, pronoun, adverb, verb, every other part of speech we'll ignore, just to make this a little bit simpler. Okay. Uh, We've been talking about logistic regression, and you guys have implemented your own version of logistic regression. But what we're going to do instead is use uh, the implementation available uh, from the uh, scikit-learn project. So I have uh, some code here that I've started. I'll also post this on the course webpage. Um, but let's just talk about what's going on here. So I first imported a bunch of tools from uh, scikit-learn. Uh, there's a tool to compute confusion matrices, like you did for your first homework assignment. There's a stochastic gradient uh, classifier, uh, like you implemented for your second homework. And then there's also some other functions uh, to create a numerical uh, feature vectors from text that we'll talk about in more detail in a second. Okay, uh, so these are the uh, packages that we're importing. Let's see how this actually works in real code. Okay, so what we do is we're going to create a bunch of strings that represent every example. What this function does is it produces a string for each word that we want to apply a part of speech tag to. For now, you can just think of the string as the word itself. So this is just an iterator over all the words that we want to assign a part of speech tag to. Then we take what's called a vectorizer and apply this function to it. So what's a vectorizer? So as the name suggests, it takes some input and then creates a vector. What this vector is, is the feature vector that's going to be our input x that numerically describes what this thing is. Now here you see that we've defined the uh, vectorizer as a hashing vectorizer. What this does is it takes each string and uses a hash function to create some integer to it. Then it takes that integer mod uh, 2 to the 20th is the default, and then creates an integer. So that's the index of the x vector, and then uh, it sees how many times you 
have that string uh, and increments that by one. So this turns our string input into a vector where, with ones in locations that correspond to the string that it saw. And because this is a hash function, we could have some collisions uh, with fairly low probability since 2 to the 20th is a pretty big number, but there could be collisions. Uh, but uh, for the most part, that's relatively low probability. You can just think about this as a giant vector with an index for every string that you might see. Okay, so now we've created our x. Now we need the y. And so the y that we're trying to predict is the part of speech tags. And so this is just going to create a matrix of all of those part of speech tags that we have. And uh, these are uh, integers before. And so how do you map a part of speech tag into an integer? Uh, this is just the index of each of the part of speech tags in some list. So that's what we're trying to predict. One for adjective, two for noun, three for, for part of speech, uh, four for adverb, five for verb, and so on. So this is exactly like what you did in the first homework with uh, trying to classify the MNIST digits into uh, zero, one, two, three, yada, yada. Okay, so now we have our X and our Y. And now we can create a classifier. So we're creating a logistic regression classifier that we're going to learn through stochastic gradient. And we tell it uh, to use a logistic classifier by specifying the loss function. We're going to have an L2 regularized uh, loss function so that the weights don't get too big, just like you did in the second homework. And then we're going to shuffle the data uh, just like you did in the second homework to make sure that we see a good mix of all of the classes. And so now we've set up our classifier and we can run it. So let's run it. And when we do, we'll compute uh, accuracy statistics on both the training set and the test set. So I'm going to switch to the other window here and run the program. Now, right now, it's not even paying attention to the string. It's just using the bias feature. And so this will give us a good baseline of how good of an accuracy will you get if you uh, guess the most frequent part of speech tag. We're seeing the confusion matrix here, and the most common part of speech tag is the noun. So we can uh, see that if we always guess noun, we get around 52% accuracy on the training set, 56% accuracy on the test set. Not that great. So now let's make this a little bit more realistic and add in the word as a feature. So we're not just using the bias dimension anymore. We also throw in the word. So this is actually using some information to try to determine what the part of speech of each of these words are. Okay, so now we get these results back and we can see that we get much better accuracy. So on the training set, we're getting 96% accuracy, but it seems to be overfitting a bit. On the test set, we're only getting around 79% accuracy. So let's take a look at some of the places where we're going wrong. Below the confusion matrix, I'm printing out what are the most frequent errors that we're making. And so one thing that you can see is that uh, there are words like future that are an adjective uh, that are being classified as a noun. And there are other words that we see that have ing at the end of it that are class getting classified as nouns, and those sorts of patterns might be a good feature that we could use to better classify those words. So let's try to add in a feature that includes whether a word ends in ing or not. And so I have a character uh, flag 
that I can add in. And what this does is instead of just creating a string with the word itself, it also puts in the individual characters that appear in that word. So let's see what happens when we add in those as features, both before and after. So one more feature that I'd like to try out is we have some external knowledge about what words take on what part of speech. That information is called a dictionary. So one thing that we can do is we can look up for every word that we're seeing, how often does it appear in a dictionary as a noun, as an adjective, or as a verb. And so what we can do is we can just create a feature that says for county, this appears as a noun twice, for grand, this appears as an adjective one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, and as a noun twice. So it can be used as both a noun and an adjective, but it's more likely to be used as an adjective. And now you can see that our accuracy is the highest that we've gotten yet, a 91. So let's try adding in all of the things that worked well. And so now we have lots and lots of features. Our accuracy goes up a little. And one of the things that you should try out is what subsets of these features work better uh, in combinations, especially uh, when you're doing things with unregularized regressors. Uh, different features can work together and even if you add in two features that by themselves improve the accuracy, adding them both in might not help as much. So you need to be careful about what features you add in. Hopefully this has been a good introduction to you for how you add features to improve your classification. This is more of an art than a science, and one of the things that you have to do is to do things like looking at your errors and doing error analysis to figure out where you're making mistakes. And you could keep doing this process, trying to figure out where you're making mistakes. One thing that seems to be interesting is that there are things that end in ing that we're calling verbs. And so maybe creating some connection of character features, for instance, saying this ends in ing, but is preceded by the word the might be a clue that this meeting is actually a noun. So we could go a step further and create what's called feature products that might be able to fix some of these mistakes that we're making. I won't do that now, but it might be something you might want to try. And this is the same sort of process that you'll have to go through in your next homework on feature engineering, where you'll have to try out lots of different features for a text classification task. And you'll want to use some of my code as a template. So for instance, what I've done is for every example, I have this function called example that generates a bunch of features that you can then uh, select subsets of using an analyzer. So let's go into that in a little bit more detail. So here in the example function, we're getting in a sentence and uh, also an argument that says, which of the words uh, do we want to create an example for? So the first word, the second word, and, and so on. It then extracts out uh, what the uh, word is itself and what part of speech we should tag it with. Then it goes through and generates all of the features. So this is generating all of the word that comes one before, uh, the word that comes one after, the words that all come before and after, the dictionary features. So this is looking it up in a dictionary called WordNet and seeing how many times does it appear as each of these parts of speech. And then finally it creates the character features 
for example, uh, saying uh, does the word end in ing, we can do that because we've taken the original word and added special symbols to mark the beginning and the end of the word. And then we create one big string out of all of that, and then that becomes our new uh, input to the hashing vectorizer. But we want to try out different combinations of features, so what I did is I created an analyzer. So many of the text vectorizers allow you to put in an analyzer that takes the original string, breaks it up into words, and then filters it. And so in this case, I allow the analyzer to have these options saying which of the features do we want to include, and then when you call the featureizer, it excludes the things that you don't want to see as a feature. And so this allows us later to take all of the arguments that get passed from the command line to correspond to the features that we want to use or not in our program. So for example, when you add in the word command line argument, it uses the word and only the word as a feature, and then you can turn on other feature sets as you like. So these are different arguments. These then get passed as options to the analyzer instance uh, that becomes the analyzer for the hashing vector. And functionally, the analyzer just takes a string as input and then gives an iterator as output the features that you actually want to use from the original input string. There are other ways to do this. I, I have some colleagues who prefer using uh, feature unions. That's another perfectly fine way to do that. I work more with text, so I prefer using uh, analyzers. It allows me to do more things at a lower uh, linguistic level. Uh, but if you want to use feature unions, that's fine too. So please take a look at this text uh, and the source code file. Uh, try to understand what's going on. Try running it yourself. Uh, if you're feeling motivated, try adding in a new feature of your own. This is what we'll work on in class, working through some more examples. And this will also be uh, the subject of your third homework assignment where you will use feature engineering to create the best features possible for a text classification task. Remember to come with your questions in class and we'll talk through them.